Hello again, it's Benjamin Schumann here for the fourth installment of our video series about reinforcement learning with AnyLogic. Uh, in the previous three videos, we learned about what reinforcement learning is and why simulation is important. We learned about the actual example model that I built to show how it can be done. And in this video, I want to show you the mechanics. So in the previous video, I showed you the actual algorithms that are set up and the agent classes. Now I want to show you how the whole thing comes to life. So let's have a look again at the AnyLogic model. As I said, there are two agent classes, Cell and Pathfinder. And the way we implement them on main is we create a population of cells, obviously, because we need lots of them. And we say, I want a hundred cells and I am positioning them such that they arrange themselves in a, in a lattice structure. So in the model, let me stop it there. You know, we have a hundred cells, 10 by 10, and each cell finds its own location based on some, some tricks with the index there. Um, and we initially assign all of them to be normal cells. Then we also set up one truck. So it's a single agent. The speed doesn't really matter and we don't do much with it just here. We just put it on main because it needs to live on main. Now, a good way to generally learn about a model is to go on to main, have a look at the embedded agent populations like we just did, and then check out the on startup code of main because that is where the model is, you know, doing the first kind of activity. So let's do that as well. First of all, uh, we we do some little, um, we close one event that we want to run uh, cyclically later on after the training. But since when the model starts, it needs to do the training first, we want to shut it off for now. Then we, we already have our 100 cells, but they're all normal cells. So what we do is for a given number of uh, walls, we, we assign random cells to be uh, cells of type Wall. Then we also randomly select another cell that's supposed to be the, the target cell. So we make sure we just select one from the normal cells and make it a target cell. And in the cell itself, I haven't shown that last time, the animation actually changes its color uh, based on what cell type it is and if it's connected to a truck or not. Then we set the uh, truck to an, a random cell again, a random normal cell, and we make the truck move there. And there's a flag that it's not for training, but that's part of the F move to cell function. And then we just make sure we go to that initial view area. So that's all that's happening at the model starter. So the next good step to learn about a model you don't know is to check, are there any events that are tricking? triggering actions. If there's no further action being triggered here, which there is not, no activity, what are the events doing? So one of them, eUpdate actual step, that's shut down now. So we're not going to bother with that because that's not triggering anything at the start. But there are these other two things. Let's look at e initial initiate cell connections first. This one only occurs once a tiny fraction of a second after the model start. Um, which is a little workaround in any logic. Um, we first need any logic to actually set up the cell agents and then we can do something with them. And here what we're doing is we loop across all the cells, every one of them. And then for each cell, we also loop across all its, um, neighbors, all the eight neighbors that it can, can find. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't do it with neighboring wall cells. But what we then do is we connect every cell to every of its neighbors. And we also fill out for every cell that collection Q values, where the key is any neighbor cell. And then initially, we just put it at zero. And remember that Q value is the, the reinforcement reward. So at the model start, going from any cell to any neighbor cell is always zero. That means there's no line visible as well. Only when we update Q values to be positive, there's going to be a green line, part with reward. And if it's, if we have a negative reward found from one cell to another, we update it with a little red line. So initially 
which set everything, all the Q values and connections up and set them to zero. And then there's one more event, the update training step event. And that is also triggering cyclically every second. Our model runs in, in real time, so the time unit is seconds. Uh, so if you play it at a one time speed, one second in the model is one second in reality. And every second, our pathfinder, the truck, is told to move to a feasible random cell, to a feasible random neighbor, that is. And what that function does, if we go into the pathfinder, f move to cell, reflect it to be a movement to a cell that is doing the training, because that, that is what's happening at the start. We also update the Q values using the Q value function. So it learns about how good is it, good is it to go from my current position to the next one, given the subsequent positions that come after the next one. So that's one thing that this update training step event does. Um, and then it's a simple check if we actually reached our target, which you typically don't most of the cases, but in some case, actually, the, the cell that you move to is your target cell. And in that case, you put yourself back to your initial cell, which we stored locally, and we basically restart the training. We say we've done one learning pass uh, that updates the number up here. So initially, this guy hasn't found his destination even once, so we haven't done any learning pass. But if I let him run and find the stuff, you'll see he's counting how many learning passes he's done over time. And in the model settings, we can actually tell him how many training passes is he supposed to do. So in our event, we also check if you just found your destiny, your target, and actually you've done all your training, then we stop doing this event. We reset it, it's never gonna be triggered again. We slow down the model for the user and we do a little trick here. We go into a state chart, which I haven't showed you yet, and say, stop being in the training model mode and go to the next one, the follow best path mode of the model. And in that mode, this button basically um, activates itself. And if the user clicks on it, we then start activating this other event, which we deactivated at the start of the model, e-update actual step. And all this one is doing is it is moving the truck to the initial cell. And well, that's, that's all we've been done. But every second it basically says uh, move to the neighbor with the highest reward based on the Q matrix structure that you developed in your training. So if we fast forward and let him do his 130 training passes now, if I click on this button, he will then say move to the neighbor with the highest reward. And he's does, doing that every cell. So that means he's following the best, most economic path. And then he basically counts Oh, I stopped the model accidentally. Let's do it again. So if I click on that, now he's following that path. Oh, that was a trivial path, just one one step. So his, star his starting location was really just next to the um, to the destiny. So let's get this guy to finish his training. And now he's trained. This is the starting position. And then when we say follow best path, he basically follows the best path, which is really trivial in this model. Let's try one more time with a more complex one. And now we can see he's gonna take like a, a vertical path and you can play around with it uh, via the AnyLogic Cloud yourself. I'm gonna put up a link. So this is all this function is doing is basically go there and when he's reached when it's reached the destination, then we just go into the restart mode where the user can basically restart the model. Nothing, no magic there. Three things that the user can set up in the in the model setup itself is uh, the Bellman, Bellman discount factor, which is how much do you feedback of the reward that you're gonna give, that you're gonna get? How many training passes do you want to do and how many random walls do you want to see in your model? And I've shown the random walls already 
we can and and the number of training passes but we can also play around with the bellman discount factor if you make it smaller it's basically harder for the model to find its way and it typically needs more training passes so you can see the the way the green gets thinner is much much faster whereas if the bellman factor is, is would be one everything would be green eventually cool i hope this was useful for you to get an idea and an inspiration how to do this please give me some feedback on if this is useful if this format is useful i think it's more useful than writing blog posts especially if it's about a specific model specific function specific implementations so i think i'm going to record some some further models uh, some further videos in the future thanks a lot